A logo change is just one step in a much bigger process. Is this a moment of reckoning? I think it can be. Hello everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you, thanks for joining us. Millions of people are without power after Hurricane Ida ripped through Louisiana and Mississippi. The Category 4 hurricane made landfall Sunday afternoon along Louisiana's southeastern coast, bringing sustained winds over 100 miles per hour. At least one person died. Ida was downgraded to a tropical storm overnight, but remained dangerous, unleashing heavy rains and flash flooding across the southeast. Louisiana's levee systems, which had been upgraded after Hurricane Katrina back in 2005, largely withstood the storm, yet the damage to buildings and other infrastructure was catastrophic. Over 5,000 National Guard troops have been activated across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Texas to help with search and rescue. The White House says administration officials will travel to survey the damage in the coming days. At a briefing with FEMA and local officials Monday, President Biden pledged the full support of the federal government. Folks get knocked down. We're there to help you get back on your feet. The most important element, though, is coordinating all the branches of government, state, local and federal. And that's what we're trying to make sure that we try to do it before this hurricane hit. That's why we've begun working together uh, we're, we're going to stand with you and the people of the Gulf as long as it takes for you to recover. Meanwhile, it is August 31st in Afghanistan, the deadline for the U.S. to complete its withdrawal from the country. The Pentagon confirmed the last American planes flew out of the country this afternoon, marking an end to America's longest war. It is the largest airlift in American history. Roughly 6,000 Americans have been evacuated since August 14th. Earlier, White House officials said they believed there are still a small number of U.S. citizens who remain in country in addition to thousands of Afghan allies who assisted U.S. forces. We are expecting to hear from Secretary of State Antony Blinken soon on the path forward for those still trying to leave the country. We will take you there live when it begins. On Sunday, the U.S. launched airstrikes on a car in Kabul containing suspected ISIS fighters. But relatives tell our partners at BBC News the strike killed 10 civilians from one family, including six children as young as two years old. In the final hours of the evacuation, U.S. officials say the Kabul airport's anti-missile defense system installed by the United States intercepted multiple rockets fired by ISIS. Intelligence officials say the threat of additional ISIS attacks remains highly likely. Over the weekend, the president and first lady attended a dignified transfer ceremony for U.S. service members killed by ISIS suicide bombers last week. The remains of 13 service members were returned to the United States, met by their loved ones at Dover Air Force Base in Delaware. President Biden met privately with the families of those service members. The White House acknowledged the gravity of their loss, but remained resolute on the withdrawal. A day or a week where you lose 13 service members is the worst day or the worst week of your presidency. And uh, that is remains the case. And yesterday, and I've seen him since he, uh, of course, went to Dover yesterday, uh, he is, of course, was deeply impacted. He knows firsthand uh, that there's nothing you can say to a family member. There's nothing you can say to someone who loses a child that is going to fill the black hole. That 